Get over here! Look, Kirby, I know the rocking is probably making you tired, but we got a job to do here, man. <laughs> I've heard of the man on the moon, but this is the, the Kirby on the pumpkin. <laughs> He's got some sleepies in his eye. Uh-huh. I, I thought there was an animation of him actually going to sleep. Probably eventually. First, he's got to, you know, get his cardio. <laughs> Failing to do so. He, he trips really fast, too. He just, like, he, yeah, he, do he does, like, a family guy fall. Like, there's no frame <laughs> between, between standing and falling. Yeah, how's it going, everybody? The Green Scorpion here, along with... Oh, uh, the Comic Foil. Sorry, I'm already looking at questions. Uh-huh. Well, before we do, like, this is episode 9, and today we're going to be fighting Squashini. I'm so, sorry, I can't get over that name. So is that actually a squash we're on and not a pumpkin? Actually, that, actually, I thought squashes were taller. That's what I, I... You know what? I think I know what this boss is. It just happens to involve a pumpkin. Well, well let, let's go check it out. I guess squashes can be in all sorts of shapes, though. Well, that's what he looks like. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, maybe the, like, tall curly part is in his hat. Well, that. let's see if I can answer a question while we're playing a boss. Okay. We have a Waddle Dee audience. Yeah. No, th this boss is cool. This boss is really cool. Oh, he's a roulette boss. Kirby learns the hard way that gambling doesn't pay. You are underage to gamble, Kirby. All right, so I, there, there is something to this boss. Uh, I just gotta figure it out. Anyway, uh, go ahead and make the first question. Okay, so the first question comes from Omega Sam for today. Um, since we're playing Kirby's Epic Yarn, have you guys ever played Yoshi's Woolly World, and what are your thoughts about it? Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World? Yep. Uh, made by the same development Oh, team. wow, I got the right guy! Good on you. Uh, Alright, so Yoshi's Woolly World. Not only have I played Yoshi's Woolly World, but there's a full Let's Play of it on my channel. As a matter of fact, there is... Um, my personal opinion on it? Yeah. Game's great. I think it's a great game. The game is fantastic. I think it's... I think it might actually be better than Yoshi's Island. It's it's like a more refined... Ah! <laughs> That's so scary. Ah! Ring the bell. It's like a more refined Yoshi's Island. I went through the entire scale. Um, are you supposed and... to... And... Good. Okay. I was thinking maybe you had to whip the fuse or something like that. Uh, no. At least I don't think so. I think Yoshi's Woolly World is... It's everything you loved from Yoshi's Story minus the crying baby Mario, um, plus a really neat yarn aesthetic, and I think the gameplay of it is more refined since it's a more recent game and has less of the annoyance factors to it. Um, you can just play through it very calmly because it's not too difficult, or you can try and get all the stuff... And getting all the stuff is a lot of fun, and and that's like and that's uh, kind of the same charm with uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn. It's like it's not a hard game to beat. Completing it, on the other hand, provides quite the challenge. Yeah, um, I really like, and it's it's got an aesthetic like this game, but better because it's 3D models. Um, it just looks really freaking good in HD. Not only do I have it for the Wii U, but I also have it for the 3DS. That's how much I like it. Um, yeah, like, when, when it was first, like, announced at, uh, at, uh, E3, I remember the presentation that, uh, Nintendo had with the, uh, with the Yarn Yoshis, and I thought that was absolutely adorable. It was really cool, um, the, the way they, the way they presented it. Um, but yes, uh, Yoshi's Woolly World, definitely a, uh, very worthwhile game. I can't, I don't know what the deal is here. Oh, 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 um. oh, uh. Yeah, are you supposed to grab one of I don't, those? I, well, I tried grabbing one. Maybe I missed it, but I don't know. Alright, so, um, next question. Okay, um, this one comes from Atom Bacon. I know Atom Bacon. Uh, what is your favorite League of Legends champion passive, and why? That's an interesting question. That's, that's tough, because I don't think of passives as much. Um, my favorite... I, rem I know there are passives that, like, I definitely enjoy. Wow, I chose the right one again. Um, there's, like, Warwick. They might have changed Warwick's, but, like, Warwick's they, gave him free life still on all 
steal on all of his attacks. Uh, they um, they did change it. Uh, they changed it to something called I think it's called Blood Scent, where um, he would immediately detect anyone below fifty percent health. Oh, okay, that used to be his E. That used to be his E, but they made it his passive. passive. That's and a smart he move. And he gains extra movement speed when moving towards uh, uh, bleeding opponents. Okay. Or like injured opponents, and there's a red blood trail you can follow. That that passive used to be on his E, but it sounds like they improved it and moved it to his. Kind of like how they did misfortunes. Uh, yeah. But in reverse, I guess. Okay. Uh, I'll answer your question in a second. Uh, we got a cutscene. Actually, this gives me time to think about it. Yeah, because so, that's like there, that's there, a toughie. There are a couple I can think of that I definitely know are like among my favorite uh, passes. Actually, I think I may know which one is my favorite. So hold that thought. Or okay. I I shall hold that. thought. I'm holding it. I got it right here, <laughs> in in this bowl. Oh, you're gonna get sand all over the cake. Go, Kirby, go! Gobbling up the cake. I declare a cake eating duel. And with that, <laughs> Prince Fluff jumped into the cake as well. The two ate and ate and ate, but they didn't balance their eating very well. Whoa! And before they could get down, the cake collapsed with them inside it. Oh, I can't eat another bite. Prince Fluff moaned as he rubbed his cake filled belly. But then, Kirby appeared with a huge cherry in his mouth. Bull. Kirby won the contest, and a looming tummy ache as well. I didn't know Kirby could get a tummy ache. I don't think... I'm not sure about that one. It, it just said he won the contest and a looming tummy ache. And I, I know that... I know in the anime he got a tummy ache every now and then. Oh. I didn't know it was a thing. Uh, yeah, sometimes he eats bombs and they explode in him, and he, and that does like bother him. So I yeah, he, I guess he can get a tummy ache. Anyway, we got a nice uh, chocolate covered graham cracker. I think is what that is. Oh, cool! So that means another level, right? Yep. Yeah. No. If you uh, if you beat the boss fight with uh, enough gems, you can get an extra patch. Cool. And here we have Coco Station. Coco Station. We are making an even better cake. All right, so back to the question at hand, and we're probably going to get another one out uh, here. Best passive. Uh, but yeah, well, my favorite passive. Favorite in, passive. In my opinion, Cell Division. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, 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 Zach. Zach. I think Zach's Cell Division is a fantastic passive. Um, not only because it works really well with how he's supposed to work, is as in, like, he's all about his health stat, but coming back from the brink of death, uh, with his, uh, with his active passive is fantastic. Um, so yeah, I definitely do appreciate Zach for, uh, for that one. I have two, and one of them is really similar. I was gonna say, um, I can't think of what it's called, but Anivia is where she turns into an egg when she dies. Uh, I don't remember what it's called, but I do know what you're talking about. It's the same kind of idea, that when her passive is on cooldown when she dies, she'll, um... Uh, she'll revert back into an egg because she's a phoenix. Yeah, I do remember that one. Um, and the other one, just because it is my favorite champion, and I do love his passive as part of what I love about him, but uh, Blitzcrank's Mana Shield. That's another really good uh, one, that's, yeah. That's just a really clutch passive. Gives him um, extra health and a shield when, when his health gets low based on how much MP you have. I'll go pick up that cart in a minute. So it does scale throughout the game. Ah, come back here! No, I'm not getting them. Oh, I do Okay. Uh, when you're trying to catch a plane. Alright, so... Yeah, of all the uh, passives I know, Cell Division would definitely be among my favorite. Among my favorites. Um, I do like Caitlyn's, obviously. Um, I do like Lux's. Um... No, I can't really think of any others, like, at least off the top of my head that I can say are, like, favorites material. Well, Blitzcrank being my champion of choice, I do really like his passive. No, Mana Shield is definitely a good there's one. There's some characters who their passive is kind of what makes them work. Mm-hmm. So there's probably better ones, but... What the... <sighs> okay. 
Um, Take that for what you will. Oh, I'll cook a lot of them. A another question here, coming from the Dazzling Shell 101. All right. Um, Dazzling Shell is wondering if you are ever planning to update your list of the greatest Zelda bosses. I actually was considering that. So that came out with what was it? Top 16? Uh, 15. 15, because it went up to whatever came out before Skyward Sword. It did not have a character from Skyward Sword on it. Um, no, it did not. Uh, it went up to 15 before that, so... This was one of Oscar's first lists for the... And, and then there's, now. like, more because of now, like, Breath of the Wild and, believe it or not, uh, Triforce Heroes. Oh, and, and, geez. And A Link Between Worlds. And A Link Between Worlds, for that matter, yeah. Yeah, so you would have four more Zelda bosses to consider, mm -hmm. and it would be a top 19. I have, I have considered that, actually, and I've also considered, uh, doing a top... However many Zelda games there are, I keep messing that up. I... I believe there's 19, 20 if you count Hyrule Warriors. Uh, um, I don't know if I count Hy Hyrule Warriors, but maybe. But no, um, I I have also considered doing the top 20, I guess now, worst uh, Zelda boss fights. Okay. Because um, that's definitely delving into some interesting territory. Um, like, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you know what? Oh, that, that's a clever, that's clever design, because it's like, I'm, like, I'm, uh, I, I feel obligated to get that lever, but then, oh, that's a trick, that's tricky game, why, why you trick me like this? Alright, uh, what else? Um, um, but yes, um, sorry. I, I, I'm still, I'm trying to focus. You're trying to. Th this level in particular kind of forces me. Train. Kind, kind of forces me to focus here. This one's oh, that's a thinker. Cool. But uh, yeah, um, I have considered uh, redoing the list. Um, I don't know if I change it all that much to be honest, because like you want to change the bosses uh, from games you already mentioned. In the yeah, last Yeah, like list. I, I don't think I change the order or like my opinion because a lot of the ones, even to this day, even though it's like the first. Uh, even though it's, like, one of the first countdowns I ever made, my opinion on the matter hasn't changed all that much. Well, I guess I shouldn't bother asking you which ones you put on, put on it if you were ever thinking of doing the list. Um... Oh, no! You lost the donut. We cannot allow that. Yeah, no, this, this level is kind of... is taking up a lot of my, my, thought, my thought process, so okay. forgive me if I'm a little out of it. Well, I'm going to go to the next question, and, uh... Don't feel like you have to answer right away. Right. I'll take over some talking duties here. Because Brandon uh, Brendan Reed asks, What units died in your first run of your first Fire Emblem game? Um, I don't remember exactly. But I do remember that a couple... I do remember units dying uh, in my first playthrough of my, of, my of my first Fire Emblem game. For me, unless I'm doing a a, like, no restarts run of a Fire Emblem game. I never let anyone die. If they die, I restart the chapter. Um, but I still don't play on casual mode because I like that challenge for myself that I have to do it perfectly. I don't want them to just respawn. If you do it on casual mode, though, that's that, that's just fine, you know, power to you. Mm -hmm. um, what, whatever you enjoy the most. I remember, though... No, actually, though, the first time I did play Fire Emblem... I did have some perm permanent deaths that I left behind. It was, um, my first Fire Emblem game was Sacred Stones, mm -hmm. and after trying several times, I finally gave up on recruiting Ewan. I was doing Ephraim's path. Recru recruiting who? Uh, Ewan. Uh... E-W-A-N. Oh, Ewan. I think it's Ewan, like Ewan McGregor, the actor. Oh. I did not know that. Yeah, I think the W becomes a U in this case. It took me a really long time to decide how to pronounce that, though. Are you kidding me? They they, they got detached before I... Uh, you know, I still got the gold. I'm okay with that. You didn't get the key... Wow. That's sad, though, after all they Because they detached right when the tracks disappeared. Jerks. That doesn't seem right to me. It, it's weird. I, I got the gold anyway, so I'm good. Okay, okay, now I can focus. 
like those train levels do take up uh, quite a bit of uh, of my thought process. So my first run of Sacred Stones, I didn't, I didn't get you in, and it was the Ephraim path. So that's the same one where you need to. I I must have tried this chapter like twenty five times. I was not as good at Fire Emblem back then, and my characters weren't well leveled. Um, I tried to get you in so many times. You need to. First recruit him, and then you need to get him to talk to Marissa so that you can recruit Marissa. I do remember that, yeah. on the enemy team and is really strong, and it's really hard to not kill her. Um, and I finally gave it up after, like, my 25th attempt because I was moving Ewan up. And Marissa is surrounded by enemies, too, that, that will kill Ewan. Um, but I was moving Ewan up, and Marissa used her turn to go down and attack and kill Ewan. And Aww. that's when I rage quit the chapter and said, okay, fine, I'm not recruiting these two. Damn. I like, I like Joshua more than Marissa anyway, and Colm more than Assassin Marissa, so... Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it, then. That, that um, was my... Since then, I don't really let characters die unless I'm doing, like, the permadeath run that we did. Yeah. Um, as for me, I don't exactly remember, like, all of the units that, uh, that died during my playthrough. Uh, my first, my first, you uh, your first, uh, my first, uh, Fire Emblem game was Sacred, uh, not Sacred Stones, uh, Blazing Sword. Yeah. Um, I do remember, however, that a lot of the difficulty I had was in the final chapters. Um, I remember specifically, I lost Lucius. Okay. Uh, during my first playthrough. Um, and, uh... What? Who else? Um, Corel. I did lose Corel uh, during uh, uh, during that playthrough. Um, I don't exa I don't exactly remember if I lost anyone else um, because I was like hell bent on keeping people alive. I do remember during my first playthrough I was a dunce and I did not level up Ellawood properly, so uh, that uh, became a bit of a crippling issue. My first playthrough of Sacred Stones, I was a dunce and I relied on Seth too much in the early game. So he stole everybody else's experience. See, I kind of did the same with, uh... With, with Marcus? Uh, Marcus, yeah, unfortunately. Ghost in a box! Get over here. I need you. Alright, um... Unfortunately, I cannot take you with me. Um... Th yeah, this level's very creative. Um, but yeah, uh, Lucius and, uh, Corel, I remember losing during my first playthrough. Um, aside from that, I don't think anyone else. Um, I do remember in, uh, Radiant Dawn and Path of Radiance, uh, well, Radiant Dawn specifically, I did not care about Fiona enough to keep her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fiona sucks. She does. Uh, she I, I feel bad for her because I like her character, but she's just terrible. She's, she's really bad. She's like, she's just a really bad unit. The reason she's not in my top 10, like least favorite Fire Emblem characters is because I like her personality. Like she's a sweetheart and she just really wants to help. Uh, she reminds me a lot of Amelia. I never got too attached to her character, so I don't even really have an opinion on that. Mm -hmm. Like she kind of reminds me of Amelia uh, in that, like she just wants to do her best, even though she's like a frail, uh, a, a frail little girl at first, but like uh, can, like, has the, uh, fortitude and the, uh, conviction to, like, stand up for her country. I Un think her father was some military leader who got contracted by Begmion to hold Dayan when they're occupying Dayan. So, like, she starts as your enemy, but you can recruit her. Uh-huh. Uh, unfortunately, unlike Amelia, she doesn't get any strong- she doesn't get much stronger, uh, the more you use her. And you don't get much opportunity to use her in Radiant Dawn. Yeah, cause... like, I I'm sorry, like, even Makalov is stronger than her, and I'm embarrassed to say that. Because she's a cavalier. She's an unpromoted cavalier when you first get her towards the end of part one. You have a few chapters with her to train her up, and then you don't see her again till midway through part three when... You really need, like, paladins. Exactly. You have n had no time to train her, so. Like, why, like, why are you going to be using, uh, like, why are you going to be using Fiona or Makalov in part four when you have the likes of Oscar and Titania? There's so many, there's so many paladins in that game. You got like, Oscar, Titania, they throw running at you at the very end. You got Joffrey. Mm -hmm. Oh, Joffrey's fantastic. You got Kieran, Makalov, Astrid, I guess. I mean, Mak Makalov eh, is questionable. 
M Makalov's an acceptable weird pick. I guess there, there's a weird niche to him. See, like, I, weird... see, see, I always, I always used. Uh... Oh man, this like gets like weaker uh, as you go. But uh, I, I always use Titania and Oscar. Like, and not, and not just because Oscar is like my name. Per, like, mind you, but he's a legitimately good unit. Mine were always, uh, Oscar and Joffrey. Yeah, Joffrey's another really good one. Uh, okay. I gotta find another one. Because there's that, uh, pathway up there. And I found one. There we go. Well, while you're sewer swimming, are you ready for another one? I am ready for another one. That was a good question. This one's coming from Deadlock Drago. Alright. What's a good game you like to play that no one has really heard of? Or is kind of obscure. Didn't I make a list about those? You, you did make a whole list about those. Um, but you can either refer back to that or if there's anything you'd like to add to it. Um, well, one game that Amber uh, recently introduced me to was Aquaria. Which is like this uh, underwater Metroidvania style game. Oh yeah, game. how's that going? Um, well, she and, she's playing through it right now. Uh, just to like prepare. Because I do plan on let's playing it with her um, eventually. Cool. But, uh... Oh no! Yeah, these things. Um, but from what I'm seeing, I'm actually very impressed with what I'm looking at. Like, it's a legitimately... Like, I wouldn't say it's the best, like, Metroidvania-style game I've ever played. Far from it. But uh, from what I'm seeing, I'm definitely looking forward to Let's Playing it. Um, you and I... I, I wouldn't call it obscure, but you recently introduced me to Celeste. Um, it, it, it's getting pretty big in the indie scene. So Gu I've heard. Guys, play... If you like platformers at all, play Celeste. It is so freaking good. It is. Like, it, it, like, aside from just the fact that it's just, like, good, it's a very, very well-designed uh, platformer. It like, has the best difficulty curve I think I've ever seen in any game ever. It, exactly. Like, it teaches you as you go, but not through tutorials or anything like that. It teaches you by just having you figure out the level. By the end of it, you're just so good at it. It mm -hmm. makes you feel so smart. Um, it's like, uh, hey, I'm learning things! One um, game that nobody's played, except I know you've played it, mm -hmm. um, probably my favorite, like, hidden gem is Chibi Robo on the GameCube. Is that really a hidden gem? Yeah. Huh. No, thought, definitely. I mean, I know it's not talked about a lot, but... I mean, I, we know about it because we're super nerds, but as far as, like, Nintendo franchises go, nobody knows about Chibi Robo, even though he has four games. I guess, but then again, like, in terms of, like, Chibi-Robo, the only game that really sticks out is the original. Yeah, I think so, too, because, um, the last one they made was, a uh, Zip Dash on the 3DS, and they made it a platformer, and that's not really what Chibi-Robo was originally. Mm-hmm. Like, Chibi-Robo just, like, had a very creative and charming concept. You're just it's this little so tiny- You're just little- You're this little tiny robot that's just helping out a family with their everyday problems. Yeah. And, like, it gets really deep because, like, you're dealing with a marriage, uh, uh like... Yeah, they're, the, the, like, the, the, the people like you're dealing, you live with, their marriage is falling apart. Yeah, their marriage is falling apart, they're having family issues and financial issues, um, you gotta, you gotta uncover a mystery of, like, uh, you gotta cover a mystery that was, like, the source of their, uh, failing marriage, like, from, like, years ago. It's a very charming game. <laughs> the, the little girl wears a frog hat all the time and only speaks in ribbits because she says she's been cursed. Yeah, but, like, really, she's just trying to escape the, the reality that her family's kind yeah. of falling apart. Like, it actually... Chibi-Robo definitely, uh, uh, incorporates a lot of, like, real-world issues but in such a small and charming game. Yeah. And the game actually does get rather dark at times. Like, very dark. I'd say it's an obscure game. It's a hidden gem. Because, guys, seriously, how many of you have played Chibi Robo? I can Come agree on. with that. Yeah. Come on, seriously. I, I think I'm actually going to concede with your idea there. Chibi Robo, I think, definitely uh, is up there as one of those very, very much hidden gems. A couple of, one, a couple of other ones that I would say I'd include would probably be, um, how do I put it? Well, Bait and Kaitos for RPGs. Uh, Bait and, Bait and Kaitos for RPGs. But, but we've mentioned that enough times. Um, there's one Game Boy Advance game I like called Summonite Soulcraft Story, though I wouldn't, I don't know if it's one of those games that's definitely worth playing. Wasn't that the one at the top of your list when you talked about this um, years ago? No, it was like at the bottom. 
like number ten or something. Oh, okay. Um, the number one, the number one game on that list, and that's actually the one I was just about to mention is uh, Psychonauts. Oh, right. I like, still have not played Psychonauts to be honest. Really? It, I have had it on Steam forever, so I supported the developer, but I've just never gotten time to play it. You, you seem like the guy who I think would be the first on that. I bet I would. I, I think Psychonauts is definitely a game that's worth. Uh, I bet I'd love worth it. Worth No, it's a very fantastic game. Um, aside from that, yeah, like that, those are pretty much it. Now, let's see if I actually have, uh, these yet. I, I also like just a lot of kind of obscure, um, obscure games on Steam. Like, I discovered, uh, Tembo the Badass Elephant. That's a really fun one. Or, <laughs> I have a soft spot in my heart for I Am Bread. Um, you and, uh, you and Nick introduced me to Darkest Dungeon. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's definitely one. Though a lot of people know about Darkest Dungeon now. Yeah, in the indie scene, you can find so many weird, obscure games that are great. A brilliant touch. But do you think it's enough to attract a new tenant? I bet it is. <laughs> Immediately attracts a new tenant. Hi, I'm Carrie. What an awesomely cute apartment. Is anyone living here? Wonderful, wonderful. Another happy tenant. Thank you, Lord Kirby. So yeah, we got Carrie now. Um, and based on her name, you can probably guess what her gimmick is. You need to carry things through levels? You get, you have to carry her through levels. Okay. So yeah, uh, that's mainly, Carrie's transport. Uh, what, basically what you gotta do is Carrie turns into a little bit, a, a little interactable that you can carry, and you gotta get her to a certain point within a certain time limit. It's actually a really, it's actually really cool. So I think that's what we're gonna do next time. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, catch up with, uh, uh, some of these, uh, new, uh, tenants. Uh, play some of, uh, play with Zeke and Beedrix and get introduced to Carrie. Um, I believe we can get one more. Let's talk to, uh, I, I don't even remember his name. Um. Uh, Mr. Stash. Oh, no, we can't talk to him. I think we've actually, I, don't, oh. Don't you talk to one of those guys over there? You know or? what, actually, we might, if we go away from the screen. Oh, you just need to refresh him, And I then guess. come back in? Maybe. Maybe. Let's see. Because I'm, I could have sworn you can get like, no, actually I think, is this is this place only really two floors? I could have sworn it was more. Maybe you need to complete some quests with them first. Probably, maybe, but yeah, um, that's pretty much it. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, end it off here, guys. Next time on Kirby's Epic Yarn, we're gonna go ahead and talk to these shopkeepers, get a few more things, maybe trick out our pad a little more. Now we got some new stuff. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and play with Zeke, Beedrix, and, uh, Carrie. Sounds like a good time. Alright, so thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye, everyone. What kind of, like, moisture, like, conditioner does he use to get his mustache that bouncy? I don't know. I remember there was an episode in Johnny Bravo, uh... Where he got like uh, Mr. Kevin's hair, uh, Mr. Kevin's hair cement or something like that, and uh, he he got he he ran out of Mr. Kevin's uh, hair cement, and he went to Pops, and he had a variation that was mixed into his stew, and Johnny tried it out, and it made his hair all bouncy. Huh. Don't ask me how I remember. What that. was hair cement? What he usually used is that why his hair was like that? Or? Yeah. I figured it like it was a brand of it, it was it was an episode specifically where he ran out of hair gel and he tried all of these like different brands of hair gel and none of them worked. That he had it. to get Mr. Kevin's. Yeah, I remember and, he joins the army in one episode and they're buzzing everyone's head. And when they try to buzz his like the shaver. Explodes. Yes, yes, I do remember that. So, yeah, that's probably what this guy uses, although I don't know if you want to use Mr. Kevin's on that mustache. Only 90s kids will understand the end of this video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 90s kids, if you remember the episode I'm talking about, go ahead and go nuts in the comments and let's discuss it, because I, I will be very impressed to those who actually remember that episode. And Kirby's getting bored with us. Let's get out of here. I'm kind of getting bored with us. Shut up.